Hi, this is Kirsten Smith, Collections Curator at the Alberni Valley Museum. As you can't visit the museum during our COVID-19 closure, we thought we'd bring the museum to you. We're going to look at one of the exhibits in the museum's communication section. It's a story of old-fashioned communication through telegraph using Morse code, but it also includes lighthouses, a shipwreck, and a brief appearance of a ghost ship. The exhibit tells two different telegraph stories, both centered around Banfield in 1902. We're going to start by looking at the All Red Route. The All Red Route was a communication tool that went around the world touching only British territories. At that time, British territories and colonies were depicted on maps as pink or red. The last section of the All Red Route to be completed was the portion that went from Banfield to Fanning Island. Thus, Banfield became the Canadian terminus for the Trans-Pacific portion of the All Red Route. A cable station was built in Banfield containing offices, living quarters, and other amenities for cable staff in this small, isolated community, including a dance hall, tennis courts, and a weekly cinema show. Designed by F.M. Rattenbury, the same architect who built the B.C. Parliament buildings, it resembled a grand railway hotel. It was from here that the cable ship Colonia began laying out 6,400 kilometers of submarine cable to complete the final leg of the All Red Route. In the museum, there are pieces of submarine cable where you can see all the components packed inside. The cable had to be strong enough to withstand both the pressure of being so deep in the ocean as well as the tidal currents closer to shore. Over long distances, the signal passing through the cable fades and has to be amplified. Here at the museum, we have a submarine repeater. This is one of a hundred such amplifiers used between Port Alberni and Hawaii on the 1963 compact cable that replaced the All Red Route. This amplifier has had the outer casing carved away so we can see the mechanical guts inside, but you can see it's encased in a heavy shell to withstand ocean conditions. Our second story brings us back near Banfield. On the coast near Banfield is Cape Beal. The first lighthouse in British Columbia was built at Cape Beale in 1884. Then, in 1891, the lighthouse was built at Carmana. In 1902, a telegraph line was built that would connect those lighthouses with Victoria. The main means of communication at that time was a letter sent by steamship, so a telegraph line would have been a big improvement. Telegraphs sent information by a Morse code. Two signals, a dot and a dash, or a long and a short, were used to transmit a coded text. Each letter of the alphabet had a particular code. In the museum, we have an operating telegraph so that you can send messages to the other side of the gallery. This is what it sounds like. Information is sent, or tapped out, on a telegraph key. Information is received on a sounder. The telegraph line, the actual piece of wire, looks like this. It would have been strung up tree to tree all along the west coast to connect the lighthouses. A linesman, because only men did the job at that time, would be responsible for maintaining and repairing a section of the telegraph line, and the only access along the line was a rough foot trail. So, with no road and not much else out there on the trail, a linesman would often build a little shack or cabin somewhere along his route. Here at the museum, we have a replica of what a linesman's cabin would have looked like. There's a bed with blankets, a small stove and some firewood, a cupboard, a lantern, and a telephone. But things changed after the wreck of the Valencia in 1906. The Valencia was a steamship that was traveling from San Francisco to Seattle in January of 1906. To get to Seattle, the ship had to travel down the Strait of Juan de Fuca. There was bad weather and the ship ended up on a reef. Lifeboats were launched in panic and several capsized, but a few made it to shore. One party found its way to a linesman's cabin and used the telephone they found to call for help. Another party made its way to Cape Beale Lighthouse, surprised to find that they already knew about the wreck that had already been called in. Rescuers came over land and by sea, but no one was able to get close enough before the rough seas swept the remaining people away. Only 37 of the 164 people on board survived. None of the 17 women and 11 children on board survived. 
Commission's inquiry into the maritime disaster drew attention to the need for safety measures required along this dangerous stretch of coast. So in 1907, construction of the Pachina Point Lighthouse and the Shipwrecked Mariner's Trail, also known as the West Coast Lifesaving Trail, began. Since 1973, this trail has been used as a recreational hiking trail known as the West Coast Trail. But what about the ghost ship? There are a couple of creepy follow-ups to the story of the Valencia. In 1910, four years after the disaster, mariners reported seeing a phantom ship in the area that looked like the Valencia with people clinging to its rigging. And in 1933, the Valencia's lifeboat number five was found floating in Barclay Sound, in very good condition for having been in the elements for 27 years.